book about blessed unrest, and the title immediately <clears throat> struck me because it's very much about what I've been doing for the last year, is traveling around the world looking for this blessed unrest, which I feel is rising up. We're so taken, understandably, by the ecological crisis, by the crisis in climate, by the very um, uh, forces in nature that threaten our very existence, that we can overlook that there's a huge change in social organization occurring. And the world that we're moving to is created from the bottom up. What this collective activity of humanity represents is our immune response to political corruption, and economic disease, and ecological degradation. And we are moving from a world that for a thousands of years has been created by privilege. Whether it's kings, whether it's armies, whether it's large governments, whether it's large business. That's what created the world we're in. It created our culture, it created our taste, it created everything we do. And we are now moving to a world that's created by community. And that's a huge transition. I began to ask myself the question is, how many organizations, how many groups were there in the world addressing themselves to the environment and social justice issues? I began to count myself through doing research and looking at tax records and began to come up with numbers that started at 30,000 and then went to 70,000. They went to a quarter million, then it went to half a million. Now we know it's well over a million organizations in the world, it could be as many as two million. And I realized that this <clears throat> movement to restore the environment, this movement to address the suffering that people are experiencing today uh, is the largest social movement in history. And what's so fascinating about it is that no one knows it exists, including itself that it's a movement the likes of which we've never seen before because when we think of a movement, we think of a charismatic leader, we think of a belief system. What you're seeing is a movement that is not only bottom up, but it shares a common set of values that wasn't imposed upon it, that didn't come from some leader someplace else. It's not based on ideologies, it's really based on heart and it espouses ideas. No organization that I know of checked with another organization to see if they got their values right. About children, about women, about water, about air, about fairness, about justice, about equity. They kind of know. People really do know um, what is fair and what is just. It's basically organizations that are primarily or generally consensus run and the coin of the realm is solution. The only thing you can do now is start to connect and collaborate and come together in more powerful ways. And that's what we're starting to see. But the last 10 years, we've seen communication technologies that allow this movement to uh, become much more powerful, but not in a dominant way, but powerful in its effectiveness and its ability to do an awful lot with uh, relatively few resources and to be global in the best sense of the word.